In late June, the Golden State Warriors traded Jordan Poole to the Washington Wizards for longtime rival and longtime thorn in the side of Warriors fans, Chris Paul. Chris Paul is one of the greatest point guards who have ever lived, but is now entering his age 38 season. While he was still solid for the Suns last year starting and still remained one of the best floor generals and passers in the league, there was a noticeable decline on both ends of the floor. With that said, Chris Paul was still an effective player, and with this trade, the Warriors not only made a calculated gamble, but they effectively put an end to their two timelines plan, which if you had told me the plan would end a calendar year year later after they won the 2022 finals, I would have been very confused. It was a clear move that needed to be made with all the new CBA rules looming and the need to gain the mojo back in the locker room after Draymond Green punched Jordan Poole in the face during training camp. Not only that, the Warriors got someone who, while not as talented as Jordan Poole at this stage of his career, Chris Paul is certainly a better player and fit for what the Warriors need to maximize the back end of Stephen Curry's career. The more I think about it, the more I like this move for the Warriors, but there are some concerns too, and in this video, we're going to go over some of the pros and some of the cons. So I should give some of my reasons first why I like this move for the Warriors. I'll cover the cons at the back end of this video, but spoiler alert, I do like this trade for the Warriors. My affinity for the Warriors is well known on this channel. But the first reason I like this move for the Warriors is that Chris Paul will actually give the Warriors some structure, if that makes sense. The Warriors are known for a unique play style, it's organized chaos, but I think Chris Paul will bring some stability in regards to further stabilizing the style of play the Warriors want to play. We all know Chris Paul's acumen as a passer, as a floor general, just breaking down film, knowing the game is IQ. He's also one of the least turnover prone guards in NBA history, has one of the best assist to turnover ratios in NBA history. And with his ability to not turn the ball over and throw the ball away all over the gym, I think that this type of skill set is exactly what the Warriors need, especially I'm assuming that Chris Paul is going to lead the second unit i don't think the warriors i don't think it's good for the warriors to break up what was the best starting five net rating wise in the nba last season and it kind of ties into my second point of why i like this trade but first obviously the structure that chris paul is going to give the warriors his deliberate style of play yeah it might be a little bit slower paced than what the warriors like but I'm sure when it comes to the second unit, which I'm assuming Chris Paul will come off the bench, I'm sure the Warriors will have no problem playing at a more deliberate, slower pace, especially when Steph Curry is off the floor. We all know what the Warriors' minutes look like when Steph Curry is off the court. I think Chris Paul and his style of play and his penchant to take care of the basketball and make sure to get the right play and make the right read every time with the second unit is going to do wonders for the Warriors. They won't bleed as many points when Steph Curry is off the court. I think when it comes to some of the guys, the younger guys who were part of the two timeline plan that are still with the Warriors, like Jonathan Kaminga and Moses Moody, I think they will benefit greatly play next to Chris Paul, especially because Chris Paul can just make any big effective in a screen and roll. And Jonathan Kaminga, I hope he gets time next year because there were times last year, a lot of times last year, where it looked like he was ready. And for a team that desperately needed size and athleticism from the wing position, I'm quite frankly surprised that Kerr, as the season wound down and headed into the playoffs, Kaminga kind of fell out of Kerr's favor, but I think going into this year, this is going to be a clear pathway for Kaminga to finally get minutes, and one of the first things he needs to do is stay attached to Chris Paul's hip in the locker, wherever else off the court, because that dude needs to be screening for Chris Paul, and Chris Paul will find him, whether it be with the pocket pass, or Chris Paul, you know, eating people up in drop coverage, and Kaminga's rolling to the rim, 
Moses Moody, once again for the second straight playoffs, showed that he is ready for some minutes. Moses Moody needs to get more time. And what better way to give a young guard more responsibility than playing him off of one of the best point guards of all time? Not only that, Steve Kerr, who's a master at managing minutes, I'm sure is going to have Chris Paul right around the 22 to 23 minute per game mark during the regular season. He is going to come hell or high water, manage the hell out of the minutes with his older players, and I'm assuming Chris Paul will be no different. But this is the type of role I think that will be effective for Chris Paul moving forward because of his age and the fact that he gets hurt in the playoffs every year now. If you could preserve Chris Paul by the time the playoffs roll around, he will be an effective weapon come playoff time. My third point with the Chris Paul trade is, he is still an effective mid-range shooter and still an effective pick-and-roll player, and with the talent he's going to be surrounded by and the system and infrastructure he's going to be surrounded by, and I'm also assuming that he's going to be in some lineups where Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green are on the court at the same time, Chris Paul is going to get easier shots. He's going to get to his spots easier with the extra spacing. He's going to be able to be an effective catch-and-shoot player, playing off of Steph, Clay, Draymond, Andrew Wiggins. Imagine Chris Paul running pick and roll with Kavon Looney. Kavon Looney has become a fucking monster screening in the pick and roll over the last, what, four or five years learning from Draymond. Looney's talked about his improvement as a screener. And what better gift can you give a screener like a Kavon Looney or a Draymond Green than one of the best pick and roll point guards ever? Chris Paul is going to find that these are some of the easiest shots he's had in his career, I think, the last few years. Whether it's drop coverage and he attacks via the mid-range, he's also still a solid pull-up shooter, although it takes a little bit of time to load up. And that's the other thing, too. This my fourth point is that Chris Paul is going to give the Warriors a different type of of offensive wrinkle that they really haven't had in a while. More pick and rolls. The Warriors ran the third least pick and rolls last year. They ran 1,269 total possessions of pick and roll where the guard's the ball handler. Chris Paul, and the number was low last year because he only played 59 games, but Chris Paul ran 475 possessions of pick and roll as the ball handler by himself, which is more than 37% of the Warriors' total possessions running pick and roll with the ball handler last year. So Chris Paul is going to give the Warriors a new dynamic. Steve Kerr is a great coach, and I have no doubt he will adjust, although he is kind of a stickler for playing his style, which, you know, that's his prerogative. He won four championships doing it. But great coaches also adjust to the player personnel. And I think it'll take a bit, but I think Steve Kerr will find a happy medium between playing his style and also letting Chris Paul thrive in the style he's known for playing. Like, just imagine Chris Paul running a pick and roll with Draymond or Kevon Looney, and on the weak side, you have Steph or Clay Thompson coming off of a pin down, or Steph and Clay screening for each other, or you throw it to Draymond Green at the free throw line or the elbow, and they run their splits, but then you have Chris Paul on the weak side with a catch and shoot opportunity. Chris Paul can also run some screen and roll with Gary Payton II, who was very successful <laughs> running pick and roll and being the roll man with Steph Curry en route to their championship run in the 2022 season. There's just a lot of ways I see the Warriors fitting Chris Paul around the type of players that the Warriors have. And by the way, the Warriors will have their main core guys back after Draymond Green signed his four-year extension yesterday, but... The Warriors, when it comes to their championship team in 2022, they have a lot of, they have all those players back and they still need to add a few pieces. I'm assuming they're going to add some veterans, you know, as free agency goes along and as, you know, the first days of free agency get out the way. But Chris Paul can fit with all these players. Gary Payton II, Kevon Looney, Jonathan Kaminga, Moses Moody. Chris Paul might play a more deliberate style than what the Warriors are used to, but they'll adjust. 
Chris Paul has a high IQ. I'm assuming he still wants to win a championship. He's one of the most competitive players of all time. Klay Thompson will be another year removed from all of his lower extremity injuries, and I'm assuming that he'll actually be able to do his full offseason workout routine this offseason this time around. Andrew Wiggins, although he went through a lot of stuff last year, so I don't even want to grade Andrew Wiggins' regular season performance, but obviously it wasn't the same as the 2021-22 season. Still think he's really good and really good for the Warriors, but he took a step back. He was also going through some family stuff, so I can't, you know, pin too much on him there. But I want to go over the cons real quickly. Of course, you know, obviously Chris Paul doesn't exactly make the Warriors younger. He is slower at this stage of his career. He's not the elite defender he used to be. He's actually been low-key picked on a few times these last two playoffs, especially just because he doesn't have the strength and quickness that he used to. But he is still smart. He is still savvy. He still has steel trap hands. So it's not like it's through lack of trying, but... It just is what it is. Chris Paul is older at this point and not the same defender he used to be. And he also makes the Warriors smaller. And if there was one thing you can nitpick with the Warriors last year is that they, outside of Andrew Wiggins and maybe Klay Thompson, if you want to count him as a wing, Andrew Wiggins was really the only wing that was above 6'7 with athleticism. Jonathan Kaminga, like I mentioned earlier, for whatever reason, fell out of favor with Steve Kerr as the season wound down and got into the playoffs. So the Warriors need to add some size on the perimeter. I don't think they need to add a bunch of wings, but they do need to add size regardless. And Chris Paul makes them smaller. And I do wonder if Chris Paul, if we fast forward a year later and we get to the playoffs, is Chris Paul going to be closing in some of those games with his fellow Warriors teammates? Because if he continues to be a target on the defensive end of the floor, and I can't get out of my head that in the first two games of the Suns Nuggets series, the Nuggets, who two playoffs prior played the Suns and Chris Paul was killing them in the drop coverage, the Nuggets, these playoffs this time around, we're like, go ahead, Chris, take all the mid-range shots and drop coverage you want. We will give you drop coverage. Noticed in that series, the Nuggets played everyone else at the level when it came to the pick and roll. Kevin Durant at the level or trapping. Devin Booker at the level or trapping. Chris Paul, Jokic dropped all the way back and the Nuggets were like, go ahead, Chris, take all the mid-range shots you want. So that is stuck in my head a little bit, but I think with a new role and Chris Paul coming off the bench and the fact that this Warriors team is still really, really good, I know I'm super high on the Warriors. That's just what happens when you win four championships and you have Steph Curry. You get the benefit of the doubt for me. But I think having Chris Paul on this team makes the Warriors better. I do think they need to sign one or two more wings to give themselves perimeter size. And there is the question of who else outside of Steph can create shots for themselves because Andrew Wiggins did take a step back last year and that was kind of the Warriors' answer during the run to the title is that in a pinch, Andrew Wiggins could get you a bucket. Now, outside of Steph and Wiggins, who's going to do that for the Warriors? Because Chris Paul can't do that consistently at this stage in his career. But regardless... I like this trade for the Warriors. I actually think this trade makes the Warriors better and it puts them one step closer to where they want to be to capitalize on Steph Curry's career, which is a championship.